I'm really hoping that this year I can do that and I don't fall off the wagon with these resolutions. <laughs> and welcome back to my channel so before we get started I have to be honest I filmed this exact video two days ago the footage came out a little grainy due to some camera settings it's fixed now so I wanted to redo it but a lot has changed in the world even in just the two days since I made the original video yesterday our country exploded yet again and that is not what this video is about but I didn't want to seem tone deaf when I'm about to say go into the new year with positivity and our nation's capital was under siege yesterday so regarding that I just want to say keep your wits about you if you're gonna debate with people online whether you believe it was okay that it happened or you don't think it was okay remain classy stay refined I promise you you will go so much further in your arguments if you do. Everyone else just pray that we can get through these tough times. But to get to the meat of the video I want to discuss my New Year's resolutions but more importantly since that is so cliche to do I want to talk to you guys about what I learned in 2020 and how I'm going to take that knowledge into this new year regardless of what comes next. All right so the first thing that 2020 taught me is that we are responsible for creating our own happiness. So if you want to say it to yourself I am responsible for creating my own happiness. I learned that in 2020 when the first lockdown happened and we were looking around at each other like, hmm, what are we gonna do next? We can't leave the house and go do fun things. We can't have people over to do fun things. And I realized sadly that I looked for external sources to make me and my family happy. Instead of really nurturing and creating an environment that we love, within our own four walls. I think we all noticed if you follow like entertainment media, a lot of celebrities or even maybe some of your friends, their relationships did not make it through 2020. And I think that is because when you're on the go and you're busy and you're moving and you're shaking, you're not really spending that much time at home and really nurturing your family. And when you're forced to spend a lot of time with each other, you realize like this isn't where I find happiness. And I did not want that to be our story. My marriage is fine. My kids couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. Happier, but I really wanted to make sure that I poured into my family and our happiness versus looking for other people to do it for me. There's a lot of things that we can do to create our own happiness and I think if you just sit down and think of the things that really bring you joy that don't involve other people, think about how you can incorporate those things into your everyday life even in the smallest way. So next is a New Year's resolution and this is one that I think everyone has and it's just to live a healthier lifestyle. But I mean this spiritually, mentally, physically, financially, any of the ways that you can think of that's how I want I want to spend more time in the word so I'm on the hunt for a really good devotional to help guide me and my husband through our quiet time in the morning I want to lose 20 pounds and the way I decided to take that into action is to buy myself a Peloton should be here in two weeks I'm really excited uh, to eat healthier I will no longer just be going to fast food multiple times a week just because ultimately it's counterproductive to my goal and the reason why I want to live a healthier lifestyle isn't just because oh, I just want to be healthy it's really because like we learned in 2020 we don't know what's coming our way. Financial ruin can be coming our way and that means that we need to be prepared. Sickness, more illness can come and I want my body to be as strong as it can be internally and externally. So I just think that for me really honing in on what is going to make me the best version of myself this year is really important especially because I put that off a lot last year between being postpartum and the craziness of last year. I just kind of was like oh I'm just trying to survive but now I'm trying not only to survive but thrive and I really hate the term thrive but I really am trying to thrive y'all. All right, so the next thing is something that 2020 taught me and that is that enjoying your real life is more important than anything that you can put on social media or any career goal that you can achieve. I said both career goals and social media because many of us live our lives on social media. For some of us, it's a job. For other people, it's just fun. And it can be really depressing. It can lead to comparison. It can make you not feel comfortable with the life that you live even though your life is completely fine. It, it can cause a lot of unnecessary issues. And like I said, for some of us social media is a job but for the average person who works a nine to five your real life and enjoying your real life and living your real life is far more important than any career goal because what you don't want is to finally achieve that highest success that you were looking for and then look back at your life and think what did I do while I was on that journey I, I didn't have fun with my family I didn't find love I alienated myself from my friends or maybe you do have love and that you do have friends 
but you weren't living in the moment and you have nothing to look back on and think like, wow, this was a fun ride to get to that goal. And I've just decided that no matter what I do, whether it's my personal life or any kind of career, job, whatever I decide to ever take on, that I'm always going to live in the moment because hundreds of thousands of people in this world did not make it through 2020 and will never have those moments back. And we won't have those moments with the people that we've lost. Another resolution that I'm peppering in here, and this is probably one on a lot of people's list is to get more organized and to plan better. My main goal with just the getting more organizing, I think I'm just going to go through and do a whole house purge again. I know we just moved in here less than six months ago. However, I'm noticing that there are things that we just don't use that we brought from the other house that I don't think that we need. I love the whole idea of a clean slate. I try to give myself that mindset at the beginning of the week or like every Sunday, you have a clean slate for this week. What are you going to accomplish? And that is something I want to do is just get organized. So that's major for me and then I wanna plan better. I have always been someone who works better under pressure. And even though I've been successful with that in the past, I don't necessarily like that about myself. I feel like if I give myself ample opportunity to complete a task ahead of time, instead of waiting until the last minute, I end up feeling better about it as a whole in the end. So I wanna stop procrastinating and I wanna get more organized. I'm really hoping that this year I can do that and I don't fall off the wagon with these resolutions. Okay, so the next one's a little bit more serious and this is something that I learned in 2020 and I think that we can also apply it to the situation that happened just yesterday in our country and that is to be mindful of the company that I keep and the content that I consume and this I truly think is something that we should all do. I think a lot of us learned last year sadly the stuff that we didn't realize that some of our friends or acquaintances really thought or felt in their heart and when certain views and thoughts were brought to the surface it was a little bit shocking or hurtful. It really made me sit back and think like hmm do I really need this person in my life when this is how they think and feel? And I said no more. When I turned 30, I told myself that I will not put myself in a situation and entertain people or be around people who weren't good for me. And I've been really good at carrying that on. And so to make this also about the content that we consume, if there's somebody that you're following on the internet and their content isn't resonating with you just because you just don't like it or because what they're saying morally does not match what's in your heart and your mind, then unfollow. What you should be consuming online should only be things that feed your soul, that feed your creativity, that feed you in a way that makes you feel better about yourself. And I mean this about friends, family members, influencers. If a family member of yours is saying something to you in person or doing something or saying something online that you don't like, it's okay to elegantly extract yourself from the situation. Be mindful of the company you keep. Say, you know what? I'm just gonna take a step back. You don't even have to tell them. Just silently start to fade into the darkness. I'm going to remove myself from anything that just isn't positive because I don't want or have to deal with it. All right, so just two more bullet points left and then we are done. The next thing I wanna talk about is something else that I learned in 2020 and that is the art of intentional living or some of you guys may know it as slow living. And I'm embarrassed to admit this, but I, as someone who is very much a homebody and very much an introvert, I always thought that I was slow living until 2020 hit and I came to the harsh realization that I actually was a lot busier than I thought I was. When we were forced to stay inside, I decided that instead of allowing that to you know, break us down, I wanted to thrive in the moment. We cleared our schedule. We spent more time as a family. I started cooking last summer, which if you've been following here for a while, you know I never did. We started eating, you know, home cooked meals all the time, whether it was me cooking them or my husband cooking them. We also learned the importance of disconnecting and just finding peace and fun within our own household instead of on the internet. We took more walks as a family. My husband has also been on a gardening kick and in March, we're going to start looking at getting raised beds built in our backyard because we wanna start growing our own vegetables. And these are just things that I'm listing to you that if you would like to live a more slow life, you can consider. But I realized that I hadn't been doing a lot of these things that I just listed because I was always, you know, waking up, getting um, Sebastian ready because Margot was just born, getting him dressed and then we'd be out the door and we were just coming home and going down for a nap or, you know, we'd be out all day and we'd come home and get ready for bed. And I just really didn't have all this time that I really thought that I had. So in 2020, I learned that there's a lot that I can do to slow down the pace of our life and really be much more intentional about my time. So in 2020, 
one this year i want to take it even slower i want to sit down and read a physical book which i never do because i always say i don't have time but if i don't pack my schedule then i do have time to sit and read a book i want to limit screen time for my children mainly bash he doesn't watch a lot of tv but i want to limit it even more but not just for him for me as well i also have a sewing machine that i never use and i really want to learn how to use it and i really want to be the best wife and mother that i can be and i realized that when i took a step back and i started slowing down i I was a much happier person and you can't be the best mom or the best wife that you want to be if you aren't happy and I really feel that taking more time to invest in myself and do more self-care was making me happy and then I was able to give that back to my family and the last thing is a resolution that I think is really fun and that we can all do and that is to show more gratitude and to celebrate the little things and I always think I've had a good handle on showing gratitude but we can always do better but celebrate the little things. Just being happy that you live to see the end of the week is something to celebrate. Whether you don't feel like you have a lot going on in your life right now or you do, there's always something to be grateful for and there's always a reason to celebrate those things. I think it's been a lot of 2020 saying, I'm just trying to survive the year. We're just trying to make it through. And even though yes, we do want that for 2021, I don't want to feel like I'm just being dragged along through a year of uncertainty. I want to be joyful and find excitement and celebration in a year that may be dragging us all along. I don't want to feel like I'm just like, oh, can we get this over with? No matter what happens this year, I want to find joy and I want to share joy. And I think that instead of looking at the world and thinking, gosh, this glass is half empty, I really do want to see it as a glass that is filled to the top, no matter what is going going on and why not make it a champagne glass tip it back and celebrate the fact that you've made it through another day. All right, so that is the end of this video. I hope that you enjoyed my New Year's resolutions and what 2020 has taught me. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You guys, we are gonna make it through this new year. Hopefully it will be a lot better than last year. And if for some reason it's not, take each day by the horns and make it the best day that you possibly can. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye. <laughs>